sound great. I don't care what you say. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. On this occasion, as we celebrate Palm Sunday, I would like to call your attention to these uh, two great truths of the gospel, grace and the truth. The message of Palm Sunday should remind us about the grace of God and the truth because they come together to us. Jesus is riding on a donkey as he entered Jerusalem. He's coming to fulfill what the word of God already had said in the Old Testament, behold, your king is coming. Christ is fulfilling the promise of the Old Testament. A king riding on a donkey, a symbol of humility, a symbol of being available and being approachable. In the message of Palm Sunday, Christ is affirming to us today that Christ remains approachable, that Christ is available, that we can approach Christ no matter where, what we are going in life, no matter our situation, we can count on God. God is available. Amen. God is available. In our moment of pain, God is available. When we cry, God cry with us. The word became flesh. God is with us. Christ is not indifferent to our suffering. Christ understand what it means to be disappointed because he was disappointed. Christ understand what it means to be abandoned because he felt that on the cross when he cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Christ understand. Christ is with us. God is available and will continue to remain available no matter our circumstances, no matter what we have done. There is no prerequisite. There is no conditions to meet before. We have access to God. Amen. God is not like our school system. You know, uh, when you are a student, there are some classes you may not take when you did not meet the requirement. Uh, you know, uh, those of you who teach, they will say, this is a prerequisite. You cannot jump, you know. You cannot register for this class if you have not yet taken this one. And sometimes even in our real life, uh, there are moments in life where people will say, I can only sit with them and talk to them if. The if you meet this condition, if, then I will do this. It's not like that with God. You don't have to do anything for you to receive the grace of God or to experience the love of God or the mercy of God. Hear me this morning. God is available. Available for you who are seated here in church this morning. Available for you who are at home. Available for anybody walking in the street. Available for anybody in the world. The grace of God, the mercy of God, oh, and the love of God. That is beyond, they are beyond our human understanding. I, I know some of us religious people can be offended by the grace of God and the mercy of God and the love of God because in our mind, sometimes we don't understand how these things work. Can I be real with you? You know how many times we have said, okay, God, why is that people who don't come to church? You know, their children are okay. They go to school. They are not sick. They get good jobs. Why is it some of us who come to church, we have all these problems? Our children are struggling. Our grandchildren are struggling. What is the problem? One day a woman asked me, what did I do wrong? No, my brothers and my sisters, God's grace is available regardless of our circumstances. 
The king riding on a donkey was a symbol of humility, a symbol that God is available for us. So, my brothers and my sisters, as we celebrate this day, may we be reminded, no matter our circumstances, no matter where we are in life, God's love, God's grace, and God's mercy is available. Sometimes we may not understand it. When I feel like I'm going under the water, when I feel the burden of life, when I experience disappointment in my life, this is what I say to the Lord, your grace is enough. Amen. When I cry, I say God's grace. God's grace, how is it going to work? I don't know, but I know it's available and it is real. I know God's grace is able to take me out of the fire. I also know God's grace is available even if I burn into the fire. Yes, this body may be destroyed by the fire or by the disease, but that will not change the fact that God's grace is available. Well, yes, this mortal body may be destroyed, but I have what I've received from the Lord, the grace of God available for us. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, as we celebrate on Palm Sunday, I want you to remember Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, showing humility and availability of God. Now we see Jesus enter the temple. The children are shouting. The children are saying, Hosanna. It means save us now. Yes, they are crying for hope. For them, I know, they were looking for somebody to deliver them from the Roman occupation. You know, sometimes we don't know how to pray. But it does not matter. God will take care of that, you know. Amen. God will take care of that. God can end all anything. So God's grace is available. It tells me that I can shout, Hosanna, save me now. I can say to the Lord, save me now. No matter where you are. You don't have to pray. You know, there are people who feel, oh, I can only pray when I'm okay, when I feel good. There are times you will not feel religious. There are times you are mad. There are times you are disappointed. In those moments, you can still talk to God, and God is going to listen to you. Because God promised I will always be with you. God is present. You can talk to God about anything at that particular time. This is how God Good our God is. And because God's grace and God's mercy and God's love is available, these provide a firm foundation for us to stand on. In other words, they are real. They are the foundation. We continue to trust in the Lord, my brothers and my sisters, no matter our circumstances. We trust. We trust the God. We must trust God the same way we trust the pilot when you jump into a plane to fly. Do you go to the pilot and ask the pilot, do you remember all your lessons about flying? <laughs> Is that what we do? Do you go inside and ask the pilot, are you in good books with your wife? I hope the wife did not drive you crazy this morning. Did you drink your coffee? We trust, we trust them. You come there and you sit them and you're saying, I'm going, I'm flying from Huntsville, Alabama to Washington, D.C. You trust that you'll get to Washington, D.C. because you have faith in the pilot and the engineers that have put that airplane together. We trust them with our lives. And sometimes we trust them too much that even when we are up there, we can even sleep with comfort except when that movement when the weather starts, you know, one day we are flying to Africa with another guy, another clergy friend of mine, and we had our music. So I was listening to my religious music, and he was listening to some secular music. So we were there, and until the plane started jumping up and down, and there were those uh, moments where they say, okay, stay in your seat. So it was so bad, and my friend looked at me and said, can I listen to your music for a little while? <laughs> So I look at him, I say, do you have any sin to confess? Because, you know, this may be it, my friend. <laughs> I said to him, if you have something to confess, confess now. He said, no, just give me your music, give me your music. So, 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 so we all hands together there, and then we pray together and say, Father, you know, uh, everything is in your hands. So whatever it is, 
So my brother and my sister, we trust. Can we also trust God? Trust the king because, you see, uh, as we receive Christ on this day, behold, your king is coming. I know we are comfortable with the idea of Jesus Christ being our savior, but we also need to receive Christ as the king and accept the lordship of Jesus Christ in our lives. Behold your king. Yes, we must receive Christ in our heart as the king and follow Christ, my brothers and my sisters, based on Christ the standard. To receive Christ as our king is also to follow the standard of God. Grace is available for all of us. Christ, our King, is coming. So as we celebrate Palm Sunday, I'm inviting you to celebrate the grace of God. But that grace comes also with the truth. My brothers and my sisters, one of the things that happened on Palm Sunday was also the cleaning of the temple. Because Jesus has a standard. Uh, one of the challenges of the 21st century Christian, we want to follow Christ, but we want to follow Christ based on our own standard. And we want God to accommodate us. It does not work like that. God is not going to accommodate us. God is not going to change God's standard to accommodate us. My brothers and my sisters, Christ cleaned the temple. That's the truth. And I want you to understand, the truth will always remain the truth. Even if all of us here, we vote against the truth, that is not going to change the reality of the truth. For instance, I know you like me. For those of you who are still liking me, that's fine. <laughs> if we pass a vote and say, Pastor Emmanuel has hair, all right, you look at me and you say, well, because we don't want to offend our pastor, you vote that I have hair. My brothers and my sisters, your vote will not change the truth that I don't have it. The truth is, there is nothing there. The truth will always remain the truth. And I know the truth is hard. And sometimes the truth breaks us. The truth hurts us sometimes. But the good news is the truth will set us free. Amen. If we allow the truth of God in our lives, that truth will set us free. Jesus cleaned the temple because Jesus has standard. Jesus overturned the tables. In the temple, he drove out the money changers. What was going on here? There was some kind of corruption in the temple. The priests were corrupted. They were practicing some kind of economic exploitation. They were exploiting the poor. Listen what the priests were doing. The priests, they were controlling the whole sacrificial system. They charged outrageous prices for the pigeons that were raised in the temple. Only the pigeons that were found in the temple or bought in the temple were considered acceptable for sacrifice. This is how the priests were so corrupted that they were taking advantage of people. They established a system of corruption. So if you have your own pigeons from home, don't bring them to the temple. If you buy them from your neighbor, no, 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 no. no. If your neighbor raised the pigeons, then no, don't buy them. Don't bring your pigeons. The only pigeons you can buy, buy them from the temple. Buy it from us, and they were charging a higher price for the sacrifice. The priests were corrupted. On this occasion, Jesus critiqued the religion of that time. He critiqued the whole system. He critiqued them and said, you have turned my house into the house of thieves. And they just did not like that. In fact, Jesus' issues began that day when he challenged their economic system and spoke about their corruption. They were so mad because Jesus disturbed their source of profit. They were so mad with Jesus Christ and they accuse him that he says he's going to destroy the temple. They find ways and they say they are going to kill him. And my brothers and my sisters, he was arrested on Thursday, Friday. They crucified him because he called himself the king. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, he died on the cross. He was accused of sedition. He died on the cross. But you know, because the truth is the truth, he was the son of the living God. 
They bury him. The grave could not hold him because he was life himself. Amen. Death could not hold him. He died on Friday. But early Sunday morning, he got up and he's alive. Because the truth is, he was the son of the living God. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, as we reflect on this Palm Sunday, the truth will always be the truth. Christ overturned the tables in the temple. He drove out the money changers. He cleaned the temple. The question for us this morning, what table Jesus need to overturn in our lives? What table Jesus needs to overturn in our lives? Perhaps this morning, God has been telling you, speaking to you about some tables that you have entertained. And you have kept those tables for a long time. Yet the Holy Spirit has been speaking to you on this occasion as Christ is cleaning the temple. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. What table Christ need to overturn in your life? There are some stuff that God needs to drive out of your life because you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Are we open to the possibilities of God and say, Lord, I surrender I give you my life. Do with me as thy will. God, I surrender to you. I am your temple. Clean me. Take away everything that does not belong to you. Help me to become the person that you want me to become. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, if we are willing, the grace of God and the truth of God will meet us where we are and we will become the people that God wants us to become as we choose to participate in what God is doing. Are we going to get mad like the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees because Jesus is cleaning the temple? Are we going to be offended because the children are shouting, Hosanna, blessed be who comes in the name of the Lord. Are we going to be offended about the truth of the gospel? Or are we going to embrace the truth of the gospel and say, here I am. Here I am. I will walk with you. God, I will walk with you. I can hear you calling me. I will walk with you. Just as I am, I come. Now, just as we are, we are to come just as we are. That's what grace does to us. Grace does not say we need to do an effort to clean ourselves so we can please God. Grace is inviting us to come just as we are. And as we are, we embrace the truth of God, and the truth shall set us free. Grace and the truth. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let all of God's people say it, Amen. Amen. Reverend Amanda.